Hi everyone, this is Eric from Traders Helping Traders with this week's Tricks of the Trade. This week we are going to do a little bit more of an overview. We've had a few new members join the website and in order to avoid any confusion I just want to go over a few things some of the basics as well as some of the new things that we have introduced more recently. This will be a good primer for those of you who have been with us for a while as well as hopefully something that will clarify things for those of you who are just joining us. Now support and resistance trading has everything to do with price action. As support and resistance traders we're very interested in what's happening in current prices because well, quite honestly, prices are the only thing on the chart that's truly there. You can draw trend lines, you can draw retracement lines, you can draw moving averages, you can put up indicators. All those things are just mathematical derivatives designed to try to help you see what's actually happening in the price chart. But prices are truly the only thing that's on your chart. In fact, as you become more proficient trading support and resistance, you might find indicators and moving averages and trend lines to be a little bit more of a distraction and sometimes you may actually just trade a naked chart. But in this instance here I have our 55 and 20 period moving average on here. Now the 55 is the most important of the two and you know that from the manual we also sometimes have a five period moving average and the idea behind those moving average lines is to alert us to crossovers to alert us to uh, changes in market momentum you can think of your moving average lines as a moving trend line and you can see how the market responds to the 20 period moving average as well as how it responds to the 55 period moving average now as a rule of thumb, if the market is above the 55, then we're primarily looking for buying opportunities. And if it is below the 55, then we are primarily looking for selling opportunities. And what we want to do is when we are above the market, we want to buy support. And when we are below the market, we want to sell resistance. So that begs the question, what does support look like and what does resistance look like? Well, quite simply, support occurs whenever you have a red-green bar combination. And resistance occurs whenever you have a green-red bar combination. That's the most basic form of support and resistance. Now you know from the manual that I do spend some time on weighting support and resistance zones in order to help you identify which support and resistance lines will tend to be the strongest. However, for trading purposes, that's not necessarily something you need to, to really focus on because what will happen is you will tend to get a lot of lines on your charts. For instance, you will have a line here and then we also have several hits here, so you'll have a line here. Uh, we have more hits through here, so we'll have a line here. Uh, we've got hits here, hits here, and so on. And you can see that your line very, or your chart can very quickly become cluttered with lines from all these support and resistance zones. So rather than focus too much on weighting which support and resistance lines are going to be the strongest, we're going to put a little bit more emphasis on actually trading the price action, trading the support and resistance when it occurs. And as I mentioned, in an uptrending market, we're going to look for every instance when we have support. In other words, we have a red-green bar combination, and that will be our buy signal. So here we have a red just a moment I'm gonna make this a little bit larger so it's easier to see so back here we have a red green bar combination that's showing us support and then from here the market trades higher here we have our next red green bar combination that's also a buy signal to buy above the signal bar the green bar is our signal bar and from there the market also moves higher here we have a red green bar combination we're still above the 55 and the market moves higher from there 
Then once we're below the 55, the opposite is the case. We're going to start looking for our green-red bar combinations, and we have one right here. The market falls off. Here's the next green-red bar combination. The market hits lower, and so on. And that's the basic signal. That's the very basics of support and resistance trading. The big variable for trading this way is it requires a lot of patience on your part because there's going to be times when the market is moving like this very quickly and you're going to be anxious to get in and sometimes it will work out for you but other times you're going to end up for instance a big move like this down here you're going to end up getting here and then all of a sudden the market stops moving lower chops around a little bit and worst case scenario moves higher and takes you out of the trade so to help with your market timing, we're now going to focus a little bit on what I refer to as market pushes. And what that is, is we're going to look for those times when the market attempts to move higher and lower. So the first order of business when we do this is we need to identify which way the market is trending. And you can do that with a simple trend line if you like, or you can just take a look at the chart. But what we're looking for is we're looking for that point where the market has entered a pullback phase. And why is that? Well, because the pullback phases are going to give us our best opportunities to buy and sell the market accordingly. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on which way the market is trending and then try to take our trade with the trend. So in this instance here, you can see that cattle put in a high back here in April. And even though we did have some stalls along the way, the market never really entered a pullback phase until the early part of June. Now, how do I know this is a pullback phase? Because when the market retreated and actually started to trade higher, this was the last time that the market came this low. The next little swing low was actually a little bit higher. And then, of course, the market continued higher from there still. So you don't need to worry too much. Uh, a pullback phase will be fairly obvious. It's not going to be a little move like this. Uh, well, it can be a little move like this, but if the market resumes the trend and, and puts in a new low, well, then you're probably not in a pullback phase. So here we have a pullback phase, and now the market has started to retrace higher. Well, why is that important? Because we can pay attention to how many times the market has tried to resume the downtrend, and that will help with our timing. So for instance, the market has begun its pullback phase. Right here is the first attempt by the market to move prices lower. So that's going to be attempt number one. Now traditionally, the first attempt to move the market lower is the weakest. It has the highest failure rate. And in fact, it offers a pretty good counter trend signal if you have the nerve and the account to trade it. Remember, counter trend trades don't always move quite as aggressively as this one did. Sometimes they just end up going sideways. But bear in mind that the first attempt to move the market lower, which is what we saw here, the market retraced higher, and here's the first push lower, it failed. So the market retraces a little bit higher, and now this is our second attempt to move the market lower. You can see that the market actually traded lower than the bar prior to it. Now this is a bullish looking bar and it's probably so because this is the pit session. I think on the combined session it may not look quite so so bullish, but this is our second attempt to move the market lower. A few days later we have our third attempt right here. And finally, we have our fourth attempt right here. Now, out of all of the attempts, the second and the fourth tend to be the strongest. They tend to offer the best opportunities. And as you can see, the market headed lower after the fourth push lower. And it was a pretty decent move. 
but look at what happened shortly after the market started heading lower we found support and we probably found support because technically we are in an uptrending market now as we're above our 55 period moving average line so if you wanted you could actually say that this was the next leg of the market and this is now a bullish leg of the market and this current move is a pullback to this move right here. So now we're going to be alert to the pushes to the upside. So here is push number one. Then a few days later we had push oops, we had push number two. A few days later still we had push number three and you can see how quickly these came. And then lastly we had push number four. Push number four was our signal that this is probably going to be the best opportunity to take the market long. And we, in fact, did buy above the high of this bar. And you can see that the market, so far anyways, has given us a pretty nice breakout to the upside. So those are the basics of support and resistance trading. Notice that even if you had ignored the pushes, if, if you did not count the pushes, simply trading the red-green bar combination off of the 55 moving average line still would have brought you into this market at a very reasonable price and actually a couple days early before we got the fourth push. So don't get hung up if you get confused counting market pushes. Just remember the basic signal. The red-green bar combination, if we're looking to buy, and the green-red bar combination, if we're looking to sell. That will serve you very well as a support and resistance trader. And that's this week's Tricks of the Trade. <laughs>